The Artists, a series of programs that focuses on art from San Diego's many noted galleries and museums, and profiles the artists as well. Your host for the series is the internationally acclaimed portrait photographer, Tony DiGesù. Hi, I'm Tony DiGesù, and now it's the following week, but in fact, it was 10 minutes ago that we stopped taping. <laughs> and I had the pleasure of, of interviewing, and I will, we will continue to do uh, another half hour with Bill Carter, who is a great artist and a great photographer and a musician. I don't know that he's a great musician. I know he plays the clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, come back in a moment and uh, we'll uh, go back to Lawrence of Arabia with Bill Carter. Bill Carter, welcome again. I'm so glad to have this other half hour with you. I think it'll be very interesting as well. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Now, I, uh, uh, we had to stop last, uh, in the last program, and you were talking about Lawrence of Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let me start you there, right. if you will. That was when I was go doing a lot of assignments all over the world and going, and I was out in the desert yeah. doing a uh, story. Assignments for whom? I want to be, uh, let, let, uh, it would be good to be specific about that. Oh, there was all kinds of people. That one was for a magazine called Geographical Magazine in uh -huh. London. Uh, I did stuff for the USIA, some of their publications. I did annual report work for TWA all oh, around the world. Say. And did that, mm, that permit you to travel? Yes. So I, that was... Uh, a period when I, I was really into doing a lot of traveling in exotic places and so uh, forth. Uh. And uh, then I came back here, as we talked about also, and uh, kind of did a study of the American character yeah. in the Middle West country. As, as I have you here, and you're that kind of photographer, when you went, when you went out on assignment, say you with the TWA mm -hmm. lines, what did you take with you? What, what equipment? At that time, I had uh, two Leicas and two or three Pentaxes, I think. Mostly 35s. I did have some two and a quarter also. Uh -huh. But with the Kodachrome film, it's very, very sharp. And if it's done right, then it works fine for a publication this size. Yes, yes. So you would go out uh, with, say, five or six cameras. And, and uh, what, when you say two Leicas, were they... Uh, there was an M2 and an M3. Uh huh. But one was a backup, more or less, if you wanted to use the light. That's right. The, yeah. In, in fact, the thing is, you get out in these weird and wonderful places and something breaks. Mm, throw it away. And the I whole just, trip is down the yes, drain. That's yes. why you need the backup. So, and you had that. Yes. And how many lenses, say? Oh, a uh, whole range of lenses from uh, extreme wide angle to telephoto. Mm -hmm. I remember in the Kurdistan, I had one lens that I almost never used, and I took it up a thousand millimeter lens in a great big box before they learned how to make a mule, you <laughs> yes. know. It was packed on a mule. They yes. had a whole mule just for this really? lens. Really? <laughs> oh, my Lord. I yeah. think I used it once. The picture was lousy. <laughs> From then on, I never bothered with that lens. A thousand millimeter. Yeah. And I, I can imagine that it was a... Well, this was a what, war situation. Uh, I yes. wanted to be able to get up close without yes. being get up close, yes. you know. Yes. <laughs> when when did you discover when when were you uh, did you first use the zoom lens? Or every everyone is familiar with the zoom lens. I don't now. use zoom lens. You still don't. No. Because uh, I never got used to them. In the old days, they weren't any good, and so they weren't sharp. They weren't sharp, yeah. and they're pretty bulky for what they are. Yes. And I'd rather carry an ex extra camera and an extra smaller lens, and then just yes. switch back and forth. Yes. yes. Also, you develop your eyes so you know exactly what a 50 millimeter lens will do. And I don't like all those in between millimeters, you know. <laughs> I'd like to well, know exactly. Well, but you know, it's more than the angle, it's also what, uh, the, the way it brings the background in or out, and depending on the focal length of the lens. For sure. Yeah. That's right. So, okay, let's get back mm -hmm. to Lawrence of Arabia. I think he was blowing up railroads. Railroads. Yeah. And it's very dry there in the desert, mm -hmm. and all that machinery is just sitting, laying there in the Arabian desert. And uh, the tracks, the Bedouins have stolen and taken everything they could off uh -huh, the uh -huh. pieces of board. As we would if we had the oh, opportunity sure. here. Oh, sure. If it's just lying there, why yes. not? It's fair yes. game. But uh, yes. uh, that, was, that was an interesting experience. Uh -huh. But I was, we were talking about how that had, was a 
certain period of my life in the 60s, and then I began to come home more and more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, do the American stories about the ghost towns in the Middle West and yes. all that. I know you compare your life to the musk deer. Do you want the to explain deer. that? Well, yes. Uh, there's a story in India about a, a, f a fabled kind of a deer. I don't think this is mm -hmm. a real deer. Mm -hmm. A deer who loves the smell of musk. Musk is an is a incense yes. fragrance yes. used in perfumes. Yes. And um, he smells the smell and he, everywhere he goes he smells it and it drives him crazy. He wants to find the source of this. And he, he runs all over the world looking for this stuff, all through the forest. Finally he collapses, falls down, he's so tired. And he realizes it's in his own navel. <laughs> and the, and the fragrance, the, the beauty that he's smelling is within is, himself. Yes. And he doesn't yes. need to search through the whole world that what much a anymore. What a lovely story. For, for meaning is what it's yes. about. Yes. You can interpret it. It's a spiritual story, Yes, really. of course. So my, in the last five years, I would say that I'm doing the musk deer thing. I'm staying home, and I'm enjoying it. Greatly. Forgive me. I'm not going to say you're contemplating your name. No. no I, <laughs> Please I don't. Refuse to say. I do meditate, <laughs> but I don't do that. <laughs> uh, the, the, this, I, and we, we showed it uh, last week, but I think it warrants another, another showing, and I think it would be lovely for you to talk a little bit more about it, about uh, uh, your experiences in, with meditation and in India, and how it influenced your vision. Well, the, um, this is a picture that, of the man on the right is a master mm -hmm. of meditation. Mm -hmm. He's since passed away. And this is a ceremony in which he was passing on the lineage of his uh, tradition yes. to, to the two brother, the brother and sister on his left. Yes. It's a very Hindu kind of setting and ceremony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's actually the one who told me that story, the musk ah, deer. Yes. So. Yes. Uh, and it was, it's like India has this deep tradition of spiritual life, and yes. most tourists there, it's very hard to get that. You, you see a lot of poverty and a lot of the surface, but there's some values there yes. that, that we can use in our lives, and that's what yes. I've discovered. Yes. So I've spent, after my experiences in India, I've come home and I've, I'm doing pictures of nudes and of mm -hmm. nature and mm -hmm. of things up close, Yes. and eucalyptus trees. Uh, now. How many, how many years did you spend in India? Oh, I guess... Uh, was it simply in, it in India, and or did you, did you go elsewhere and... Uh, no, in, in the, that was the main place in the last uh, several years, mm -hmm. that outside mm -hmm. of America that I've I gone. See. I was sort of a staff photographer for, for a group there, and I was invited by them to go to different a group, places. A group where? In, in India. I see. And, uh, it seems to me you're accepted wherever you go. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like being a royal... It's the musk you bring in. No, no, it's not <laughs> that. It's a camera. <laughs> no. But uh, it was pretty nice. I, I just come back here, actually, in last year. And I was really exhausted from India and the 36-hour train rides and all that sort of thing. Yes. And then I got a call. I was asked to go back because this man was going to Kashmir with a small group, which is uh -huh. a fabulously beautiful place, and uh -huh. photographed up there for two weeks. And yes. Being a photographer has its rewards, as yes, you well know. Indeed. Yes. It's not the easiest way to make a living in the world, but I wouldn't. But it's it. the most fun way. This is this is the this is what it's all about. Yeah. This is what its life is about. Let's talk about this. Now, this, this is, y you've come home. Yeah, this is a picture of some kelp off the coast of California. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is in a place called Point Lobos, which is very famous in photography yes. because Edward Weston and Ansel mm -hmm. Adams mm -hmm. uh, have done a lot of work there. In yes. fact, I was visiting Ansel at a workshop there and, mm -hmm. and, and did this. He, he rarely does things in color. This is just... But it's, it's a symbol, in a way, of yeah. coming, coming back to my, where I started from, yes. you know? Yes, yes. And this is another, this is a beautiful reflection. Yes, that's in uh, Indiana, some uh, uh -huh. leaves, just some uh -huh. fall leaves in a pond. The simple things are the yes. be most beautiful, cool. you know? You know, I walk the beaches quite a lot, and I see kelp, but somehow I don't take cameras with me. Uh -huh. And I, I think, well, I can't do it justice, I'll just walk. There's a lot of kelp and there I, this year, you know? Yes, yeah. yes. 
I don't know why. I don't the, know why they the, kept... These tides, these strange tides we had uh, uh, been washing. Uh, well, well, now you're home. Now I'm home. And are you home more or less to stay? You've got, there's, a, there's another Bill Carter working. I think so. A, a lot of what I've learned in photography and in life is to letting go and letting some other thing take over, you yes. know? When you prepare for a shooting or something, you yes. work it all out. But then if you really do it right, you forget what you worked out. And uh -huh. whatever that inner guidance thing is, yeah. starts happening. Yeah. What, what do you think you'll be doing now? What, uh, what will you be doing in the future? Is there another book? Are you working on something? Is... Um, I'm working without a c conscious plan, but I feel that there's something happening. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing, I've, for about a year, I've been doing these abstract studies yes. of nudes. Yes. And, and there's, it's possible that that could become a yeah. book project. Well, you're following in the tradition of the great, some of the great photographers, Weston, for instance. Right. It's uh, interesting. But you are bringing in another vision. You're, well, you're everyone giving... sees in their own way. Yes, of course. Someone uh, said this was like bread. <laughs> it is, like twisted bread, yes, you know? Yes, yes, You mentioned Weston. People say that he made vegetables look like people. Uh, there was one absolute nude that was a green pepper. Yeah. <laughs> and it or was a pepper a that was a nude, <laughs> whichever. I don't know which one you meant. Yes. Yeah. You're right. It was a. In, in any case, this is this is yours, and and it has a, It has your vision. It has your eye. And I never had a studio before about mm -hmm. a year ago, and all of a sudden my living room started disappearing piece ah. by piece, and the studio started. This appearing. is your studio, your living room. You're yeah. actually using now. You're using backgrounds and and tables and so on. Yeah, never had done new that experience. Before. <laughs> you were yeah. a portrait photographer all your life. Yes. Yeah. Now, I, now I experience the outdoors, and it's a good balance. Yeah. Where do you think, now I've, you've, done, you've done quite a few of these. Most of them, I gather, are in black and white. Most in black and white. Why is that? I think black and white is, in some ways, it's a more abstract and pure medium. Um, it's easy to get um, great effects in color. Um, it's more difficult to get, to really control the color. Black and white has, it's pure form and, and gray scales. Mm -hmm. I, go ahead, explain sort of, that because... In terms of photography, it's going back to the sources and the roots of photography too, you know. I have great admiration for the 19th century photographers. Oh, they, those were artists. Really? They were painters first, then they became chemists, and then photographers. Right. See. In a sense, you know, I, I think I'm a revolutionary in the modern world because what is being looked for is brand new, fresh, unseen, ever before. I'm, I'm, I'm not that way. I, I like classical yes. notions of beauty. Well, um, you, you know, my experience, and of course I've been in, in, in photography 53 years now, and when I discovered for color, when it started, when color started, this time around, it changed my life. And I remember early on in, the, in 57, 60, and so on, if I did a black and white, I, I, I hated it because I thought, what if I had done this in color? <laughs> now you're going back. Yeah. You have, you have color, you've had color for many years. Sure. And now you want to discover And that's the and most white. commercial thing. I send colors to my yes. agencies in New yeah. York and so forth. But. Do you see another vision? Why aren't you tempted to do this in color as well as black and white? Well, I do. I do to some extent. Yeah. Uh, I don't print my own color, and I print the black and white, uh -huh. and I love the whole process of seeing it through to the oh, end. Oh, yes, yes, of course. And there's pleasure in that, too. So, uh...